Right. So, hello everyone. Uh, this chapter is uh, chapter 14, iterative search. So we are going to uh, go back to what uh, we've been doing with the grid search. And now we apply uh, a couple of other functions that let us uh, carry an iterative search, okay, within the parameters of uh, some specified model. Uh, And um, let's have a look at this um, uh, these notes. Uh, the, these are the notes that um, the previous call uh, made. So, and uh, uh, we are going to use uh, uh, apply uh, two uh, in particular these two methods. Uh, bias, uh, bias uh, Bayesian optimization and simulated annealing. Um, as I said, I don't know if you um, recall uh, a bit what we did it about iterative search, uh, about grid search. Now we are uh, basically applying, uh, um, we make an example, a case study with the cell um, data set uh, and apply these two functions uh, tune uh, bias and tune simulated and new. Okay, these two functions basically what they do is uh, uh, tuning the parameters of the model. Uh, and so we, uh, in this case, use specified models for, for this purpose. And uh, mm, uh, applying uh, for the, the Bayesian uh, optimization, a predictive model, which is trained on uh, existing resampling, resampling results. And, uh, and then, so basically, uh, these values uh, then would be used to suggest uh, a new value. Okay, this is a, a basically tuning uh, the parameters uh, on, uh, on provided grid. While the simulated annealing, what does is, um, uh, is um, scanning through the upper parameter space uh, and select the good ones while um, discarding the others. Okay, so this is the uh, the notes of the previous course, uh, and as I said, the, our learning objectives uh, are uh, having a look at these um, uh, new functions, uh, which are used to optimize model parameters using bias optimization. Uh, we will talk about the Gaussian process model uh, and um, uh, why the acquisition function can be um, expressed as a trade-off between exploration and exploitation. And so uh, this is all within the bias. And then uh, 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 the second function is tune, sim, and meal, uh, stands for similar and milling. Uh, and this uh, is again another, uh, the second function to optimize the model parameters. Um, so we uh, describe a bit what, what's, uh, what are these two, as I mentioned, uh, with a case study specifically. Um, so the previous course uh, did a nice example with the Palmer Penguin. Um, data set. So we load the tidy diverse tidy model, palm, palmer penguin, and then there are these other two, uh, basically the patchwork for, for the visualization. Um, so we have this um, um, 
we set the, the data set uh, in a way that we don't have any missing values and select uh, just the variables that we need. We split uh, the data set and then we, we do um, like, uh, calls, uh, cross validation uh, on the training set. Uh, and then we set the metric. Okay, this is what uh, the previous course did, uh, and this is what the uh, chapter uh, presents. So uh, they use um, the cell data set that we saw uh, on the previous chapter, uh, and this, uh, um, I think I cannot use it because it's still running the model. But okay, basically, um, uh, the procedure is the same. So we select uh, just the variable that we need. We do the cross validation, and then um, the model that we are going to use is a support vector machine model. Yeah, this course uh, was because. Uh, this uh, support vector machine model is basically um, um, used um, because um, support, uh, so it provides basically two parameters, okay, a cost function uh, and a kernel function. Uh, and so when we, uh, seen that we use this type of model, uh, what we do is tuning these two parameters for, for this model. So in this case, uh, for department pending, um, they um, set a recipe um, for, with the sex uh, and all the other variables. While with cells, what we do uh, it's a bit more um, something that is uh, what is being uh, mentioned in the book. So because we w we use the support vector machine model, uh, and this is um, a requirement for certain type of models, is to um, scale the values, in particular, for, for this data set, the cells, uh, which we mentioned uh, previously. And so this data set has a, uh, contains uh, like the dimension, different dimension um, of a cell, uh, so the length, the weight, the, uh, and so uh, they, they might, might be of different units. So in order to be able to uh, use a support vector machine model, we need to normalize the predictor. And so at our basic uh, step uh, recipe, uh, our um, formula, because the recipe function is basically the formula, so the application. So we assign uh, a formula, uh, and then we do um, with the step function, uh, a bit of uh, feature engineering. So we do transformation of the predictors um, to be um, like able to obtain a bit more uh, uh, robust results uh, by the model. Okay, so, uh, so as I said, this is one very important step in this case. And also this step here with Johnson, I give you, the step Yale Johnson is um, a um, uh, transformation uh, data type of uh, data, uh, transformation. Okay, it is uh, uh, basically creates a specification. Um, okay, it's within. It's used within a, a, a recipe. Uh, function okay, so but, but what does it transform the data um, in in a way that uh, um, 
mathematically uh, you find a very uh, I can tell you a, a resource that you can uh, look up the, the Max Kuhn um, book for example so they uh, as soon as I be uh, able to share um, so I share. if you go in the documentation a little bit more downwards, then the details section explains it very well, I think. Which one? Inside the, the R Studio, the in the documentation pane. Um so okay. it has like a good uh, details subchapter. Can you put can you put it in the in the chat? The link in the chat, please. Yeah, I, I'll link to the uh, documentation of, of the recipes tidy models package, but it's also in the R Studio at home. Okay. Okay. So basically, as you can see, this is the 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 step that uh, has been used. But if you want to uh, like have a look at a bit more uh, on details of about this the mathematical um, step of this, um, uh, basically what's happening inside this function, okay? Uh, which is our, like inversing the values, okay? Uh, this is a very you know, good uh, way to explain these things, but it, it is another step that basically um, normalize uh, different um, units uh, and it is used, it can be used with this step normalized. Okay, let's let's go back. Uh, okay, this is the, uh, the, the, the okay, this is the explanation and uh, that's that's uh, what we wanted. Uh, and so even here uh, we have uh, like a sort of uh, example. Of what's happening, but uh, um, uh, then um, I'll add later um, maybe in the uh, in on Slack I'll give more information. So let's let's go back and see. So basically, what we do is uh, applying these two uh, these two step functions. Uh, uh, op and obtain a new uh, data set, okay? And this data set, if you want to see the data set, um, how um, has been basically transformed, okay? You do prep, okay? And bake or juice, uh, it depends by if you want to add uh, new data or not. Juice, okay, or, or you can use bake new uh, data. Uh, okay, so uh, basically, if you do if you do this, you are you going to you you are able to see uh, the tra the transformation that you just made applying this. Okay, and so you have a new data set where you are going to apply your model. Uh, let's let's start specifying uh, using our model specification. Okay, so as I said, we are going to use a support vector machine model. I'm not going to much in details about the type of models, what's happening within the models and everything, because um, um, I like to focus a bit on what's happening there, and then we might want to go back uh, on, on, on a wider information. Uh, so as you can see, this is a, a department pending, okay? And this is the cell. I, um, okay, here uh, we use uh, as well the support vector machine. It's basically the uh, model specification is exactly the same, okay? So uh, this is uh, the tidy model syntax for specifying uh, a type of model. 
So what you do is basically assign a recipe, which is like a function, and then in case you need it, you add step functions. If you want to have a look at the data, uh, our, they are transformed to this step, and then you set a model, which is for uh, any type of data, a certain type of model, it's always the same uh, syntax, okay? So this is, uh, in this case, for the support vector machine, we have a cost and a kernel, uh, which is this one here. This is the kernel. We can even, um, so not this is still running. But, um, and so these are the two parameters that we can tune. Okay, we are still not using tune bias uh, or tune simulator and mean. Okay, so this is, this is just the uh, model specification. So we tune our parameters because these two parameters for this type of model can be tuned. Uh, uh, and then this model has an engine which uses the kernel lab, and it is a classification problem. Okay, even this one for the Palmer penguin is a classification. Okay, so next step is to set up a workflow. As you can see, the workflow set up is exactly the same. Two different type of data, the workflow is exactly the same. Uh, and then when you do the workflow, you do function workflow. It what means? Means that this is a basically the glue uh, within a model specification and a recipe, so a formula with the data um, uh, manipulation. Okay. Yeah. Any question? Maybe. Okay. So. What's new? Basically, within this type of model, the support vector machine, we have a cost function and a current function. So as you can see, the cost, if I uh, run this function or this other function, the output is this one here. So this um, is basically um, a function that transforms um, a certain range that you provide or comes with uh, a standard range, but you can provide a specified range. Uh, and uh, it is one of the parameters within the support vector machine. And the other one is the uh, radial basis function sigma, which is the kernel okay, um, parameter of the support vector machine. Uh, and as well uh, works this function as the same as the previous one, same 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 thing. And uh, okay, so now now that we at our workflow, okay, we can have a look at the parameters, okay, and update them with specified values, or we can extract the parameters and update with the values. Yeah? All good? Yeah, any questions maybe? So, Oh, okay, it's done. Um, so where is that? This is what we saw uh, and in, in the previous chapters. So in this case, both parameters are now tuned uh, and set updated. Uh, so we can go forward. Uh, and now, we start using, uh, this is the, basically the part that we are uh, new, which is new, okay? So, 
okay, this is not the factor union in the meaning that we are still updating the parameters. Okay, so we are now updating the parameters and uh, assign a grid. Okay, so that means that we are going to interpolate the value. So for a certain value of cost minus six, and that, that will be the absorbed value for sigma. Okay, uh, and we specify the level of the interpolation that we, we are going to do. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so here is basically the same. Okay, uh, uh, there is a, a Q grid. I'm, I'm, I don't, um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not making confusion, but I am going to specify the differences because you can tune grid or assign a grid um, and these are options so you decide which one is best for you and then uh, we we set the matrix as we did it so very at the very top of this um, um, Palmer handling notes uh, and then what we do it's basically use the resamples and run the tune grid okay and collect the matrix so let's let's run all the things Let's go up. Uh, so just to so we have this data, okay, which are angle, area, average, and they are different units. So we apply the step here Johnson and normalize. And then uh, if we do prep and juice, we can see the transformation. They now are all scaled properly. So they are, they are same range. Okay. Even with the uh, dimensionality reduction, it's a, um, a compulsory step, the step normalize before to apply the principal component. So that you can uh, use uh, standardized data. Okay, so this is the uh, model specification. This is the workflow. Uh, as I mentioned, these are the two parameters inside the, the, the model, the support vector machine. Okay, what I wanted to do is this uh, thing. Uh, this is uh, this type of model. It's um, uh, basically uh, by its name, okay. So they are machines, vector. So vector they adapt to new value to calculated value, okay. So just to, to give you a, a very rough uh, idea. Okay, so the model tries to maximize the width of the margin between classes using a non-linear class boundary. I don't, I don't go uh, any further, uh, but uh, uh, it's, it's uh, very useful. Uh, and, and so the, the thing is now that you can uh, see its options and see what they got, this function does by itself. So you can use the cost function. I can even specify uh, the things inside. Okay, 
per esempio il Simplify e Range, Texture e Range, uh, the Transformation e di Log Tube, I can even change uh, to Reciprocal Transformation, uh, uh, and so these are uh, the I'm in the report. So there is a managing. This is an assertion term, so it's the term lab, and they have, uh, uh, it has this, um, uh, the margin, the cost, and the fee. This is, this is a positive number for radial basis function. function. So it's like specifying um, uh, what is a, um, um, it's a sort of kernel, so that means uh, uh, the area where the model can can uh, go through, can, can expand, okay, you specify like a range. Okay, um, and so uh, this is our, uh, what is this? This is our uh, model. And so we use the workflow, we set up the workflow, and then we extract the parameters. If we use these two, and we extract the parameters, so as we did the last time, okay, then we can update them to specified values. Why we use these values? Because the uh, result of the, the model uh, lets us understand that we can use this uh, value. Uh, and so we we still haven't seen this result, but um, we most probably saw them in previous chapters. Uh, and then we can, uh, if we update this option to, to specified values, and then we apply a grid. So this is a, a way to basically uh, obtain interpolate as I said okay and so for us as for example for a, a value of cost of the cost function of two we have a specified value C um, then we uh, instead uh, can use the two grid function okay this is um, important to uh, because it can uh, lead to confusion. So we can use this this uh, two grid function which requires uh, the cross validation. So basically what does is using the values that we just you can do or you can do it or you cannot do it. It's not you're not obliged but it depends by the type of data. If you want to use the cross validation so like replication of the data, um, uh, you then apply the two grid function with the uh, false, the, the option uh, resamples, that calls the resamples, and then the grid and the matrix. You can specify the matrix, you cannot specify the matrix. It depends by you. So we have specified the matrix as the uh, I will see, uh, so the rock, the area under the curve, uh, and then we can collect the matrix. Okay, so this is the, the result for the cells, uh, data set. So for this cost function, uh, we have uh, an expected value of 8.86%, uh, for example, with a standard error uh this type uh, and so we can even uh, visualize uh, a bit what's happening uh, but uh, before that what we what is the 
uh, part of this um, uh, chapter, it's basically to use the function to bias base uh, or to simulate a new. Because they, they, what they do, they do iterative search. Okay, so to implement iterative search, for example, via by, uh, Bayesian optimization, we use the two bias. Okay, and this is very the same thing as using two grid, but you have other arguments. Okay, so there is this control, uh, which is, um, oh, sorry, background noise. Okay, which is um, um, very useful because if you don't put it, uh, basically you cannot. Um, see the results if you collect them later from the workflow, or you cannot extrapolate the values. So it's very important to uh, add this option. And uh, also, there are other options. Uh, so there is the resamples, the metrics, so we know uh, all of these uh, things. But then uh, we have the initial the parameter info, the iteration, and the control. Okay, uh, even in tune uh, grid, we have some of these parameters. Okay. So this is tune grid, and here uh, we use some uh, parameters. We have parameter info, okay. grid, uh, which is uh, you can specify. I don't know if you recall it. You can specify it by a number, or if you build a grid, then you have the matrix and then the control. Okay, now instead of having the control grid, we have a control bias for the tune bias. Let's have a look at the bias. Okay, we have the iteration. Uh, we can use the objective. Yep. Uh, and so this might take a bit, so I don't, uh, don't run. In fact, we, we've got the results here. Sorry, uh, 20 minutes on my computer. Uh, and so these are all the iteration, and anytime you have a value, for the area under the curve, you can see if you uh, uh, like increase the number of iteration, what changes? If the area under the curve um, increases, or okay. So let's go back to our notes. While these are the uh, uh, result for the palm and penguin. Okay, so uh, sa same procedures, same thing. So the Bayesian optimization, what is what exactly? It's a technique, okay, uh, that can be used to iteratively search for new tuning parameter values. Okay, so basically uh, create a model do a resampling, and then create another model that um, allows you for additional, uh, so advise you for other possible values of the parameters that might be more appropriate. So 
Um, and so, in particular, the most commonly used technique, technique for Bayesian optimization is called the Gaussian process model. Because when you is the um, uh, theorem limit, the, the <laughs> where you can, uh, if you uh, increase the number of iteration, um, so you tend to um, have a Gaussian distribution. Okay, so this is what happens. So in plain terms, a Gaussian process model allows us to make prediction about our data by incorporating prior knowledge and fitting a function to the data. With a given set of training points, there are potentially an increased number of functions. Okay, so Gaussian process shine by giving each of these functions a probability. This generates a probability distribution which can be added. Okay, so this is uh, why it is useful. Uh, it is useful because you can find other values which uh, can be uh, closer to a better model. Okay, and uh, how would you discover this? Uh, passing through metrics, through your search. Look at the metrics and see which one of the iteration release the best model. Okay, there is um, uh, some some links here, uh, but let let's go um, a bit forward now and have a look at the other. Uh, The, the second part. So we now can show best uh, the, the result of the uh, iteration. Uh, we can see that the estimation is now uh, 89%, okay, which is better. Because with the resampling, we found a better combination of parameters, okay, and so a better. We can even do uh, once we have our values, our results, this is our uh, model, we can use the autoplot function uh, and you can use type performance, for example. Okay, and, and so you can autoplot and visualize uh, what's happened within the different iterations and which one released better. And you have uh, uh, then to um, jumping forward. Okay, you can use type per performance or type parameter. For example, okay. uh, So you can see uh, yeah, by uh, iteration, the cost uh, function um, and the uh, CP. And then you can do. Okay, so let's go uh, now to simulated annealing. Now that we did one, the second is exactly the same. The function is tune, sim, anneal. And I provide its, provide its control sim at nil. Uh, before. So we can have a look at the function. So, as well as before, we have uh, some extra option rather than. back to the book. And so this is the um annealing. Okay, similar annealing. Uh this is uh 
Ok, di casi uh, nice visualization because basically what does is forging. Okay, so basically find uh, things that are useful and throw out the other. Okay, so okay, that all they do everything. It's it's always like that. Okay, but basically start with a single uh, candidate value, then take a random but constrained work, controlled random work, um, and then if the new candidate parameter value is better than the current ca uh, candidate, uh, keep it's keep it. Otherwise, it's replaced. So there is an algorithm uh, that does this. Okay. And so there is an acceptance uh, probability value, otherwise va uh, values are discussed. Uh, that's why it wasn't working, because uh, there is this belongs to a package, which is fine-tuned package. So, Studio. And this is the uh, documentation. Uh, there are a bit more uh, options uh, that can be used. And, and so, but basically the same same syntax. As, as we saw before, okay. Long thing, uh, and that's it. So this is what um, I wanted to show you. Uh, one more thing is what happened, for example, with this um, uh, tune sim and kneeling. Okay, and there is a nice um, uh, uh, there is a nice plot. So there, there was a, a nice uh, um, okay. So as you can see. Um, Is a nice video that show you that shows you what what actually happened um, and why it, it basically it goes forward finding the more the most close value to the observed value uh, and then to the next one and to, then to the next one to to provide the best uh, uh, the the closest uh, uh, okay. yeah. so, uh, other interesting things were uh, these uh, other plots that we haven't had uh, a look at, but uh, I think there's some straightforward uh, to so, all right. Hope that helps somehow. If you have any questions, I don't know if I can answer them. Yeah, um, first, uh, I'd just like to thank you. I think it was a uh, more challenging uh, chapter. Uh, so thank you for making it uh, more clear. Um, I just wanted to, to add to, to like further uh, strengthen your point about the, the animation. I, f I found it um, very instructive. Like it has like a lot of either text or, or plots, but then when it's animated, then everything becomes much more clear. And, um, and, and just to, uh, uh, to give a suggestion, if you would like that, uh, for me, playing it like in a two times uh, uh, playback speed was was much like easier to see the development inside the, the animation, okay. the video. So so for me, it was easier. 
Um, and and just another one more thought is that like the um, uh, auto plot uh, function, it's it's just like uh, uh, the more we we continue throughout the book, it, the more it seems like magic. Like it has like a specific use case for every need, and you just need to plot it, and like good things happen. Uh, so so it's nice it's nice to know that you. You always have it there inside your bag. Um, so these are just like my thoughts. And thank you again. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions? Maybe, I don't know, about uh, uh, anything that you want to ask? Okay. No questions. Just thanks for presenting that. Very helpful.